तमेव विदिवासी मृत्युमेतिना पंथा विद्यते When we look out at the universe and its changing form, we sometimes wonder about the relationship between God and man. What is the truth that saints and sages seek? And how does the search begin? In the case of one little boy, it began in this way. Mool Shankar and his friends were playing gilly danda when he hit the gilly into the temple. He went into the temple and was shocked at the sacrilege he had committed. He was repentant. On the occasion of Mahashivratri, Mool Shankar was told that like all good Brahmins, he should fast and stay awake all night to watch over the sacred shivaling while his elders went off to sleep the little boy struggled to stay awake he saw that mice were wandering over the sacred stone which he was not even allowed to touch why isn't lord shiva stopping these mice lord shiva cannot be here this stone cannot be god The child Mool Shankar, later to be known as Swami Dayanand Saraswati, was born in the town of Tankara in Gujarat state in 1824. His father Karsanji Tiwari was an important local official and landlord. He was a great believer in the power of the Brahmanical texts to illumine the mind. Karsanji was initiating his son into the tradition by which he would one day become an orthodox brahmin and a successful administrator but the memory of the mice and the powerlessness of stone kept worrying the boy Mool Shankar was lost in his thoughts but his father had no patience with him he did not try to understand his son mool shankar's mother protected him but she failed to make karsanji tolerant mool shankar's sister was mortally ill In later years Swami Dayanand recalled that he was terrified at the prospect of death When my uncle was dying I cried as I had never cried before I asked the people around me how I could become immortal and several pundits told me that yoga was the answer Seeing that Mool Shankar was constantly brooding, his father had his horoscope examined and a marriage was arranged. Mool Shankar did not want to be shackled by the bonds of marriage and made his opinion plain to everybody. He 
made his plans and told nobody. Mool Shankar set out in search of knowledge. He became a Brahmachari and changed his name to Shuddha Chaitanya to remain incognito. He knew his father would be hunting for him and he was afraid of his anger. He came to Sela, to a well-known yogi, Lalji Bhagat, of whom he had heard much. From Sela, he went to Siddhapur, where he joined a group of ascetics. Having received information from an acquaintance in Siddhapur, Kharsanji arrived with four sepoys. Mool Shankar was stunned and helpless. Swami Dayanand has described his imprisonment in his autobiography. He pretended to snore each night so that the sepoys thought him a heavy sleeper. When he found an opportunity, he slipped out of the temple. Shankar went to Chandor, a town not far from Baroda. In Chandor, he met Swami Parmanand Paramhans. He studied here, was ordained a sannyasi, and given the name of Dayanand. For 15 years, this son of a rich Brahmin, without possessions, subsisting on charity, wandered along the roads of India. Dayanand went in search of learned men and ascetics, sometimes studying philosophy, sometimes the Vedas, learning the theory and practice of yoga. He visited almost all the major holy places of India. He suffered, he braved fatigue, insult and danger. All around him he saw superstition and ignorance, spiritual laxity, degrading prejudices like the caste system, and the tens of thousands of stone idols which he abominated. Eventually, he reached Mathura, where he found an old guru, even more implacable than himself in his condemnation of all superstition. This guru had been blind from infancy, alone in the world from the age of 11, a learned man, Swami Vidyanand Saraswati. Dayanand put himself under his discipline for two and a half years. Swami Vidyananda Saraswati made him promise that he would dedicate his life to the eradication of all heresies and work to restore the truth of the Veda. The pupil promised, 
he took the surname of his guru and Dayanand Saraswati set out to challenge the superstition around him. In 1867, Swami Dayanand Saraswati came to Hardwar at the time of the Kumbh Mela. The waters of the Ganga, he told the people, can never wash away any sin. Ritual only obscures the truth. Where, he thundered, where in the Vedas is it said that river water can purify the soul of man? And he planted in Hardwar the Pakhanda Khandani Pataka, a banner to defy the orthodoxy of Hindu Brahmanism. The orthodox Brahmins felt nervous. In Banaras, the pundits challenged him to an open debate, one man against 300 pundits, the whole front line and reserve of Hindu orthodoxy. Dayanand had such a mastery of Sanskrit and the Vedas that he defeated them and proved that their preachings were opposed to the Vedas, to the true word of God. The Brahmins hooted him down, but the people heard his voice and the whole of North India was shaken. Not since Shankara had a champion of the Vedas spoken so powerfully and stirred the people so deeply. Even confirmed atheists like Guru Dat Vidyarthi had only to meet Swamiji to be converted. Apart from his spiritual advocacy, Swami Dayanand was also aware of the social awakening in the country. During the mutiny, he had been in touch with Tantia Tope, the Rani of Jhansi, and Nana Sahib Peshwa. Swamiji mooted the idea of Swarajya, and in later years, he sent Shamji Krishn Verma to England, where he founded the India League to fight for the country's freedom. Swamiji had for long condemned sati and child marriage. He said that women should have equal rights with men. He said that the caste system had no place in religion. Once a barber, while shaving Swami Dayanand, made a sarcastic remark about those who preach and those who practice. Swamiji promptly went and ate at the barber's house, something unthinkable for a Brahmin. In retaliation against his popularity, a Brahmin fed him a poisoned pan. With his experience of yoga, Swamiji overcame the effects of the poison. When the man was arrested and brought before him, Swamiji said with a smile, when my goal is the freedom of mankind, how can I put a man to prison? Let him go. On another occasion, so great was his physical strength that when a Raja attacked him, he snapped his sword in two and contemptuously flung the pieces away. In Calcutta in 1872, Swami Dayanand met Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar and Keshav Chandra Sen. They told Dayanand that he ought to give up teaching in Sanskrit. It would be much better if he could communicate in the language of the people. Swamiji accepted this advice. But when Keshav Chandra Sen asked him to declare that God had revealed the truth to him, Dayanand flatly refused. God, he said, is all-pervading. It is absurd to assume that God would stoop to whisper the truth into one man's ear. God is formless, endless, unchanging. God is the cause of all knowledge and of all that is known through knowledge. The Vedas are the scriptures of true knowledge. Based upon these beliefs, Swami Dayanand Saraswati founded the Arya Samaj in April of 1875, a hundred years ago, in Bombay. In the courtyard of the Brahma temple at Pushkar, near Ajmer, Swamiji dictated and corrected a compendium of all his teachings known as the Satyartha Prakash, 
the light of true meaning. All Swamiji's writings were in Hindi and he stressed that Hindi should be the national language. Because Swamiji was concerned with social welfare, he advocated the spread of education based on nationalist ideals. However, he made it clear to every member of the Arya Samaj that the primary object of the Samaj was to do good to the whole world, to achieve its physical, social and spiritual progress. In Udaipur, Maharana Sajjan Singh offered Swamiji the post of head priest at the Eklingaji temple, one of the richest and most famous in Rajasthan. Swamiji looked upon this offer as another form of bondage and announced that he would leave Udaipur for Jodhpur. Maharana Sajjan Singh warned him of the corruption and hostility he would meet in Jodhpur. But this only made the old warrior of the spirit more determined than ever to take his message there. In Jodhpur, Swamiji found that the Maharaja was a weak and pleasure-loving man. Those courtiers who wanted to rule the state used the courtesan, Nanni Bhaktan by name, to control the king. Swami Dayanand exposed her for what she was, but the king was completely under her spell. In the ensuing palace intrigue, the courtesan bribed Swamiji's cook to put poison and ground glass into his milk. Now all the power of yoga could not save him. Swami Dayanand Saraswati knew that the end had come. He forgave the cook and gave him some money to escape from the inevitable wrath of the people, an act of kindness even in the face of death. Mool Shankar the boy had been terrified of death. Dayananda man was not bothered by it, for he had found his release through spiritual action. Sitting up calmly, he said, Thy will be done, O God. And he breathed his last. Karke. आलोकित सकल विश्व तुम मौन हुए पर रहे अमर शत शत प्रणाम हे ज्ञान श्रोत हे ज्योति प्रखर हे शाश्वत स्वर्ग 